Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at the base model Forester to see what the true affordable Forester looks like. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Doug Smith Subaru here in American Fork, Utah, for giving me some time with this car. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check what they have currently. If you have any questions or need any help, just ask for Sam. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a 2.5 liter flat four cylinder that goes through a CVT. Fuel economy is 26 around town and then 33 on the highway with power outputs being 180 horsepower and then 178 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So, first off, I think this blue color looks pretty cool. You can see it really shows that center hood bulge that Super's going for now. And then the lights, they're not quite as fancy as like the loaded up versions, but I think they still look sharp. I uh, notice this is unpainted, uh, but again, it kind of fits with the trim here at the bottom. And so overall, it's very blue. Now around the side here, our time wheel setup is 225 by 60 by 17 in the front and over in the rear. You can see with the wheels, you got the silver mixed with the darker elements there in the center. And look at the fender flare here and then the fender as well. I think it looks really sharp and the same thing with the trim all along the side. And if we take a few steps back, here's your full side profile. This paint, I mean, it really pops. Look at that in the sun. Now we do have a more basic key fob. So you got the Subaru logo there in the back, lock and unlock. You got the unlock for the hatch as well. And yeah, it's one you stick in the ignition. So popping into said back area, we've got plenty of storage space here in the back of the Forester and got this nice cover here to protect everything in the rear but yeah it's a practical vehicle again similar in size to like a RAV4 since this is manual you just grab this and plop that down look at the taillights you can see the trim that goes across to the Subaru logo and there's the rear now take a look at the door panel here you can see we've got the cloth trim here and then soft touch down below and then popping over to the seats see if the trim here this is cool as well and then popping in legroom's great got a little storage area here and then headroom is, is pretty good it does come down a little actually no this one doesn't have a center so no center doesn't come down so you've got better headroom now take a look at the front door panel it's actually soft touch here at the top and then you got more of that cloth trim and everything down below Automatic for the front window, for the driver, and then you got your mirror adjustments. Let's so a quick look at the mirrors. And then here's the front seat, again, with the two different colors, manually adjustable. Uh, but they do give you some kind of like soft touch elements in the dash. Ah, Subaru likes it old school style. Now, take a look at the steering wheel. You can see we've got kind of like soft touch all around, but it's not super fancy. Again, this is an entry level. We've got a bunch of practical controls in the steering wheel, including adaptive cruise control, drive mode select, voice command controls, volume controls, all that. Traditional stocks on the back. Speaking of traditional, look at the gauge cluster. You do have a screen there in the center which displays different bits of info, but I mean, you've got a mostly analog gauge cluster. In reverse, we do have a backup camera there. Trajectory lines turn with the steering wheel, uh, which, yeah, pretty cool looking. And yeah, it's a double screen, so like you've got this screen and then you've got the bottom screen too. I'm not sure about this whole setup. It's it's very interesting if you ask me. I mean, this does have dual zone climate, which is nice. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is more complicated almost than the bigger screen that's like one unit. But you do have more physical buttons if you like physical buttons. This is kind of cool with the trim that goes across the dash. And then while we're in this area, club box. And then we've got some USB ports here. Shifter for that CVT. Got a little parking brake here. Some cup holders, a charging port. Center console, good storage. Nice trim on the top of this. Just a regular mirror, uh, and like I said earlier, no center. So here's a quick look at the window sticker 2025. Total MSRP, 31,863. I mean, that's affordable in today's world. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility of the hood, both the mirrors, and throughout the rest of the rear. 
set off. And setting off in the entry level, Forester. I just drove a Touring before this, fully loaded. And so far I'm testing the driving dynamics aren't really different. You know, seats feel a little bit different, that's for sure. You know, cloth versus the fancy seats in the Touring. But everything else pretty much seems to feel the same. It's nice in here. I will say for an entry level car, I mean, it's got some nice, uh, like this is soft touch here on the side, for example. So if you're a taller person, your knee goes against this. That's fine. I will say Subaru's uh, key ignition is probably the best that I've ever experienced. Like it's so easy to get the key in the ignition. Subaru's somehow nailed that. Too bad the technology's gone away, right? Cause it seems like everyone wants push button start, which you know, pros and cons to that, right? Pros and cons to that. Yeah, this is nice. Decent power so far. I mean, we'll see again on the interstate. That touring kind of felt a little bit slow. Yeah, again, not a race car by any means, but it, it moves. It can get out of its own way, but Subarus have never been known to be fast outside of like the sports cars like the WRX and stuff. It drives pretty well. Yeah, I'm not noticing a huge difference between this and the Touring in terms of the road manners. It seems like it drives pretty much the same. So it really does look like with the Forester loaded up packages, you're paying all the money is going into paying for fancier features rather than a different driving experience. Yeah, it's nice. And so, summing things up with this entry level Forester, this is a nice car. I mean, look at this for what it is. It's an all wheel drive crossover that gets pretty good fuel economy. It's, it's big too. It's not a small car by any means. It's, you know, about the size of a RAV4 it's a RAV4 size car for low 30s. I think that's a pretty, pretty solid offering. So let me know what you guys think about the entry level Forester, but I think with the equipment this has, again, it's base model, but with the equipment this has, the symmetrical all-wheel drive and everything, I mean, this is, this is like the type of car you get, like, I want something that's just reliable, simplistic, can drive in all four seasons and is not gonna break the bank. And that's what this Forester does.